Well, good morning. I'm glad you're all here today. Isn't it a beautiful day out? A lot of you have mentioned it's nice to see sunshine. Even if it does have frost on the ground, that's okay. Announcements are in your bulletin. Pay attention to those and look those over. Uh, let me highlight what's happening a week from Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but 10 days from now is Ash Wednesday. A couple of big things are going on. Uh, first of all, Ellen Myers has tickets uh, for um, the Jesus Revolution movie. And if you're interested in going to that, it's at 6 o'clock. Call Ellen. She has a block of tickets, and they're free. So uh, if you, you might want to go to that, give Ellen a call. Also, if you don't want to go to the movies, you want then to come here for Ash Wednesday service, which will be at 7 o'clock here. And uh, I'll be preaching, so the show will really be good. Well, okay, maybe not that good, but we'll find out. So uh, that's a week from Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And during Lent, which begins on Ash Wednesday, we will be having a book study on Tuesdays. Uh, I think the day of the week was wrong last week, but it's on Tuesdays, either at 1.30 or 7. It's on Kevin Watson's book, Perfect Love. Uh, I'll put the book up here. If you want to take a quick look at it, you can do that. Uh, I'm ordering books this week. I'll order a couple extra in case you're not signed up. We passed the clipboard last week for people wanting to sign up and put down your name, whether you'll be at the 1.30 class or the 7 o'clock in the evening class. What I was going to do is say, and I'll leave the clipboard up here if you didn't sign up, but you know what? If you're like me, you have... Forget about it an hour from now. So we're going to start the clipboard around again. You guys know the drill. So if you have not signed up and want to do the uh, book study, uh, sign your name. And whether you're going to the 1.30 class or the 7 o'clock class, that's two weeks from now. Two weeks, 16 days, two weeks from this Tuesday is when we'll start that class. And it will run six or seven weeks through, through Lent. Uh, as the organ prelude is played, let us use this time to prepare ourselves, our minds and our hearts for meeting the Lord God in worship.
Let us stand and join in the call to worship. God loves us and watches over us. Because of his great love, God continually showers down blessings upon us. We're going to start with one of my favorite hymns, which is Blessed Assurance. Certainly as we draw nearer to the Lord, we receive a blessed assurance from him about our salvation through Jesus Christ. So let's remain standing and join in singing together. Let us unite our voices together as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. 
And as the ushers come forward, we will present to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing to be upon these gifts which we place upon your altar, upon the gifts which have been given throughout this past week, and upon the gifts of time and service and effort which the people of this church have dedicated to your kingdom in your name. Please bless all these gifts and the givers who have given them, that in all things your kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You may be seated. And it's time we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, would all of you have them, please stand at this time. And Jack uh, will be coming around. Gio is going to be coming around with the microphone, and uh, you'll be able to share your uh, prayer request. So please stand if you have something to share. I just want to... Uh, thank you for those who have been praying for my brothers. Uh, they, we had Marty down for a surgery on Wednesday, and everything went well. It was a long day, but everything went really well, and he's able to start learning to walk again. And uh, my brother Greg sees his doctor next week to uh, see well, how the infusions have been going. So pray for good results for that. But we praise the Lord for the healing that has been done. On well, continued prayer for Sharon as she's recovering from her hip replacement surgery, Terry's sister. 
And your brother's name again is? Greg and Marty. Greg and Marty. I'd like to ask for travel mercies for next weekend. Um, we'll be traveling to Maryland to the memorial for my uncle Ron. And then we will be going into Pennsylvania to visit our son Ryan and his wife Dion. Most of you people remember Ed Powell, and his granddaughter is uh, an avid luge trainee, I guess you'd say. She was over in Seoul, Korea and training for the Olympics and had a really bad accident and they have had to remove part of her skull and uh, but she's progressing and so um, she's coherent, she's talking to them, she's even laughing but I cannot remember her name because it's an odd name. Do you know Bev? Addie. That's it, Addie. Addie? Addie Albert, if I'm right? Yes. Takes two of us to think it up but we did it. So just remember uh, her in prayer because uh, she's only a young teenager, so. I have an announcement that we have lambs in the barn, Geo. <laughs> one's black and one's gray. You can't tell me that I'm any different. So, I, and Geo wants to have a project next year at the fair. So hopefully, Brian, you'll be around to the sheep barn and we will let you know well, what we know. Yeah, that'd be great. One more over here and there. We owe a big thanks to Sue Alger and Vet Stump because they coordinated what we did last Wednesday night. They made the meals and got everything divvied up and I was just part of the driving and I know a lot of other people were, but it was a blessing for me to go out and see people and uh, of course I was directionally challenged, um, but I got lost, but I found myself, and everybody got their meals. The last one, they might have had to warm up a little bit because I was, it took me a while, but I got there, and it was truly a blessing. Over here. Oh, there's one. Okay, sorry. Well, that's what I was going to say because we received one of those meals, and it was very nice, and there were several that received those, and so it's a good thing. I hope they can keep it going. I have a lady that I do uh, Bible study with every day, and she has a friend. Her name is Barb, and uh, Barb uh, has trouble with diabetes. Uh, she had an episode and went into the hospital, and she hasn't been able to walk. So if you could pray for the doctors to find what is wrong, um, that would be a blessing. Thank you. As the organ plays, the kneeling rail is open for anyone who would like to come forward and kneel before the Lord in prayer. Uh, I will lead us in a time of silent prayer and then my prayer, and we will close with the Lord's prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, during this time of prayer, we lift up to you Greg and Marty, and we pray for healing for them.
We pray for healing for Sharon, who will have a hip replacement. We pray for traveling mercies for people who will be traveling this week. We lift up to you Addie, who is in uh, Korea following a very serious accident. Please bless her with strength and healing. We are thankful for newborn lambs. We are thankful for all those who delivered dinners this past Wednesday. We pray for healing for Barb. Heavenly Father, Above all, we know that you are a God who loves us. You love us so much that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. He was willing to die upon the cross, to take our sins upon himself and suffer death in place of us. So we do not have to die because of our sins, but so we can live eternally with you in heaven. What a blessing that is. But that is not the only blessing you give. You do not only want us to be blessed after we die, you also want us to be blessed before we die. That is why you watch over and give us so much while we live here on earth. You protect us, you help us, you strengthen us, you guide us, you fill us with your Holy Spirit. What blessings these are. Even before we die and go to heaven, we can exclaim, what blessings. Yes, God, you are truly a good and loving God. Thank you so much for the many gifts, all the blessings that we receive every day, continually throughout our lives. Without these many blessings, our lives will be truly hopeless, and doomed. In thanksgiving, God, we offer to you the worship of our hearts. Please receive this act of worship, which we give because we love you, and we want to praise and glorify you for all that you are and for all that you give. We offer this to you in the name of the greatest blessing of all, our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to come to you in worship, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time, it's time for the kids to come on down for their uh, act of worship. So kids, come on down. All right, so last week we started talking about um, God is love, and we thought it was real appropriate because we have a super special holiday coming up. What holiday is coming up? Can we remember? Valentine's. Yes, it's Valentine's Day um, coming up this week. So if you could, could somebody share with everybody here what we did at Kids Club? Anyone? I'll go. So at Kids Club, we talked all about ways that we could show our families and our communities some love. And something that everyone decided on was that sharing with our church was really important and sharing with our mom and dads and our siblings. So at Kids Club, we made 
several things for our families to take home to show them some love, but we also made some things for you guys today too. So um, we're just gonna take a little time and pass these out. Now, I think that was the highlight of the service, don't you think so? So, yeah, thank you. It's always nice to know you are loved. Our middle hymn today is Count Your Blessings. I'm not real familiar with this one. If you don't know it, you might want to follow the music as well on page 771 in your hymnal. Remain seated and let's sing this together. Count Your Blessings.
Okay, how many of you have sung that before? Okay, just about all of you, great. That's not one we had in the old United Methodist hymnal, so, uh, but that's a great hymn. That's a great uh, song we sang. Pull out your Bible and turn in it to Mark chapter 10. Get your sermon notes out and a pen or a pencil so you can fill in the blanks as we go. And let's talk about blessings today. Isn't that a great thought? After that hymn, I think we should talk about blessings, you think? Okay, let's do that. Mark 10, verses 13 to 16 in the New Living Translation. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus to, so he could touch them and bless them. But the disciples told them not to bother him. But when Jesus saw what was happening, he was very displeased with his disciples. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, anyone who doesn't have their kind of faith will never get into the kingdom of God. Then he took the children into his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Today I'm going to start a series of two messages, we'll finish this up next week, on God's blessings that he has for us. You know what? God loves to bless his children. God just loves to do that. Verse 16, then he took the children into his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. He loves to do that with all of his children. And all of us who have accepted Christ as our Savior, we are his family. We are his children. God loves to bless you. Unfortunately, the disciples had set up a roadblock that prevented the blessings from getting through to the children. Verse 13. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them, but the disciples told them not to bother him. You know what? Jesus was not happy. He was not happy with this. Verse 14, but when Jesus saw what was happening, he was very displeased with his disciples. The fact is today Jesus still wants to bless people, all of God's children. That's his nature because God is love. And when you love someone, you want to bless them, whether it's with a valentine, like we just got in church today, or in many, many other ways that God likes to bless us. So today we're going to look at what blessings God gives to us. So he gives so, so many blessings to us that at the end of the day, all we can exclaim is, what blessings? What blessings? Then next week, we're going to look at roadblocks that people set up that prevent God's blessings from getting through to them in their lives. Let me tell you, today's message was harder to write than next week's is. Why? Because the question today I had to address is, how do you really describe God's blessings? For many people, these are hard to describe because of this. Write this down. This is your first blank. Blessings are spiritually discerned. Blessings are spiritually discerned. Trying to describe God's blessings to someone who doesn't know God is like trying to describe a sunset to a blind person. How do you describe that to a blind person? It's trying to describe a symphony to somebody who's deaf. It's like trying to describe chocolate to someone who's never tasted chocolate before. Aren't those the three greatest blessings in life? A beautiful sunset, a symphony, and chocolate. Doesn't that make sense? How do you describe spiritual blessings to people who are not spiritual? In 1 Corinthians 2, Paul wrote this, Every word we speak was taught to us by God's Spirit, not by human wisdom. And the same Spirit helps us teach spiritual things to spiritual people. That's why only someone who has God's Spirit can understand spiritual blessings. Anyone who doesn't have God's spirit thinks these blessings are foolish. The thing is, the word blessed has become commonplace now. It used to be, I'm guessing maybe 10 years ago, that if you went up to somebody and said, hey, how are you doing? They'd say, fine, good, everything's great, that kind of thing. Then, then a while back, some Christians said, you know, we really are blessed. And when somebody asks me, how are you doing? I'm going to answer, I'm blessed. 
and that was a theological term that was used by Christians. Unfortunately, a lot of other people have picked up that term blessed, and now it seems like whenever you ask a lot of people, are you doing a lot of times, they just, oh, I'm blessed. Even people who aren't Christians, even people who don't know what God's blessings are will just say blessed because that's become a synonym for I'm having a good day today. Well, I didn't get fired, so I'm blessed. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but a lot of people who use the term blessed don't really know what God's blessings are because they don't know the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what reveals God's blessings to us now. So what blessings? We're going to, as spiritual people here today, we're going to really look at the blessings God does give to us that really make us, as Christians, claim what blessings in a way that non-Christians don't even understand. Okay? So what blessings does God give? The first one is this. Write this down. Eternal life. Eternal life is a gift from God. It's not something you earn. It's not something you deserve. It's a gift. Ephesians 2, 8 says, but Ephesians 2, verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. In Acts 16, we read, then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and and your household. This is the greatest gift of all, the greatest blessing that God ever gives to us. Why is it the greatest blessing? Because it will last the longest. Okay? Every other blessing that God gives us is temporary. It's for our life in this world. But the gift of eternal life, well, I guess it will last for eternity, won't it? And that's why it's the greatest blessing of all. You will celebrate receiving this gift for all eternity. Once there were three men adrift out in the middle of the ocean in a lifeboat. Their ship had sank. They were the only three that survived. They were in the lifeboat. They had been out in the ocean for a couple weeks, and they were getting pretty hungry and pretty thirsty when one of them saw a bottle floating along in the ocean. So they paddled over to the bottle and pulled it out. They, and finally, we had something to drink. And they opened up a bottle, and poof, a genie pops out of the Bible. Pops out of the bottle. Bottle, bottle. The Bible would have been a blessing if it had floated along too. But this was a bottle. So the genie popped out of the bottle, and the genie looked at the three men and said, Hmm, normally I give three wishes, but since there's three of you, I'll give each one of you one wish. So he turned to the first man and said, What do you wish for? And the man said, Well, you know, I really miss my wife and my family. We've been out here for a couple of weeks. I wish I was back home today. Poof, he disappears out of the boat. The genie turns to the second man and says, what do you wish for? And he says, you know, I really haven't eaten well in a couple of weeks now. I wish I was back at home eating a nice T-bone steak. Poof, he disappears out of the boat. The genie turns to the third man and says, okay, it's your turn. What do you wish for? And the third man said, it's kind of lonely without my friends here. I wish they were back in the boat with me. <laughs> okay, here's... The thing. If you could wish for one thing, wish for eternal life in the kingdom of heaven with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If that's the only thing you could have, that is the greatest thing right there. That would be sufficient. That is enough to make me exclaim, what blessings, what blessings we have. But fortunately, God gives us more blessings than just eternal life. Our second blessing I want to talk about is, goes really closely with this. We sang about this a little bit ago. That ble second blessing I want to talk about is blessed assurance. It's called blessed assurance for a reason. Blessed assurance is the knowledge that you are saved and you are confident of where you will spend eternity. Romans 5, verses 3 and 4 says, We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to endure. And endurance develops strength of character in us. And character strength is our confident expectation of salvation. I like that term. Ex, uh, confident expectation of salvation. In Hebrews 11, 1, the writer of Hebrews says, What is faith? It is the confident assurance that we, we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. I, we can have a blessed assurance. We can know for sure that when I take my last breath, 
the next moment I'm going to be in heaven with my Savior. Unfortunately for a lot of Christians, what happens is this. Once you become saved, Satan wants you to doubt your salvation. After all, Satan is the father of all lies, and he wants you to doubt that you're really saved. And so he puts little thoughts in your minds, the, the what-ifs. Like, what if the Bible's wrong? What if there is no heaven? What if Jesus really didn't die for my sins? Those thoughts always come from Satan. Satan is great at putting what-ifs in your mind. But Christ, on the other hand, gives us full assurance and confidence that sustains us in times of doubt. If you ever have those what-ifs about heaven, I just read a book last week. My son gave me a book for Christmas by Lee Strobel called The Case for Heaven. Any of you ever read anything by Lee Strobel? His big book was The Case for Christ. That was his first one. Uh, we'll talk more about Lee in the future sometime. But if you ever doubt that there is such a thing as heaven, get Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Heaven. He goes, uh, interviews a bunch of experts on all sorts of fields about, about eternal life, and he concludes at the end that heaven is real, and you can know you're going to heaven. And that is what we call blessed assurance. The third uh, blessing that God gives us here in life is protection. You know, God gives us protection from many of life's problems. Now, it's not that Christians don't get sick. We do. It's not that we don't get hurt or injured. We do. It's not that we don't have problems. We have problems. We all have difficulties in life. On the other hand, even Jesus had trials and troubles. Do we think we're any better than Jesus? Let me tell you, I'm not. If Jesus had trials and troubles and was hurt, then that's a part of life for us. Paul had trials and troubles and hurts as well. There's no guarantee that once you accept Christ that your life is going to be perfect. There are some pastors who want to guarantee that, that after you accept Christ, you'll become rich and all you'll have is blessings and no problems. Well, let me tell you, they are liars because we all have troubles in our life. But the fact is God helps us avoid many problems that a lot of other people have. We avoid a lot of the hurts in life when we follow him. Proverbs 2.8 says, For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Psalm 91.14 says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. Certainly the problems I have in my life are much fewer than they would be if I did not have the blessings of God on my life. One night I was out in the country driving along a road. You know what it's like to drive in the country, right? On these little country roads, and you're coming up, there's an intersection, there's nobody around. It was at nighttime. And so I'm driving along this road at 55 miles an hour, and I know there's a crossroads about a half a mile up ahead, and I can see across the field that there's another car. I can see the headlights on the cross street coming across. And I know that car has a stop sign. But as I'm driving along, suddenly something, a thought comes in my mind, and I think, I better slow down because that person may not stop. So I slow down, and guess what? That person didn't stop. He blew through that stop sign at at least 55 miles an hour. If I had not slowed down, I wouldn't be here today. And neither would my family, because they were in the car with me. Now, where do you think that thought came from? Let me tell you, God was speaking to me. That's how God speaks. He puts thoughts in your minds. And that was a thought that protected me and helped sustain my life. And there are so many other times when I can look back, and I didn't see it at the time, but now later, now that I'm an old guy, I can look back and say, that was God protecting me. That was God watching over me. That was God making sure something bad didn't happen to, me, happen to me. I can look back and see all those times, and again, I can exclaim, what blessings, what blessings I have. The next blessing I think God gives us is this one, strength and comfort. He gives us strength and comfort when we do suffer. God gives us strength and help when we need it the most to turn temporary troubles into eternal victories. 
Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Psalm 23, verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In 2 Corinthians 1, we read, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. Comfort is this. Comfort is knowing I can trust in God. God will get me through this. God will get me through this. Everything is going to turn out good. We have that because we know God gives us strength and comfort to bear up when things aren't as we wish they were. Certainly, Christ came through the cross. And Paul came, in one of his letters, Paul talks about all the troubles he's been, where he's been whipped with the 39 lashes three times, and he's been shipwrecked and beaten, and uh, tried, people tried to assassinate him. He lived through all those, and God helped him by giving him comfort and strength to survive. Why? Because God loves him. If God loves Jesus and Paul that much, he certainly loves us that much as well. The next blessing God gives us is one that showers down upon me continually, earthly provisions. Earthly provisions. You know, God supplies all of my needs. I don't need a thing. In fact, that makes it real difficult for my family on my birthday and Christmas because they say, what can we get you for Christmas, Dad? I say, nothing. I have everything I want. I have more than I want. I have more than I need. I want to get rid of stuff. Anybody else in that situation? Where I, I would rather get stuff out of the house, not get more stuff in the house. I got too much stuff anyway. Why? God loves me and showers down provisions upon me. Psalm 23, 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. God's blessings overflow into our lives so often. Deuteronomy 30, verses 8 and 9, You will again obey the Lord and follow all his commands I am giving you today. Then the Lord your God will make you the most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, like lambs, and crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous, just as he delighted in your fathers. You know, as I look back on my life, I realize everything I have is a blessing. Everything I have is a gift from God. And so I'll go aside a little bit from the sermon notes today. That's why I practice good stewardship. I figure if everything I have is a gift from God, if anything I have can be used for God, I want to use it for him. You know, if I can use my car for God, my car's a gift from God. I, I will drive anything I can if I need to, like delivering meals. That's using your car because it's a gift from God to bless other people. My home is a gift from God. My family is a gift from God. The food I eat is always a gift from God. Did I ever mention I like to sneak out to the kitchen and get a, a, an Oreo every now and then? You know, before I, eat, before I put that Oreo in my mouth, I thank the Lord again. I always thank the Lord for everything I eat because it's always a gift from God. Everything I have is a blessing. Now, this is not a guarantee of riches in the world, as I said a few minutes ago, but many Christians in the world do, and many Christians in the world do not have everything they need, but you know what? They say they do. Let me repeat that. There are a lot of Christians in the world that don't have all the blessings of material possessions I have, but they say they have everything they need, and they are content. And perhaps that's the next blessing we want to talk about. God gives us feelings of contentment. Philippians 4 says this, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. This is Paul writing to us. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Paul knew that contentment was a blessing from God. Paul wrote to Timothy, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. In Hebrews 13, 5, we read, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Let me tell you, that promise from God is worth all the money in the world. Never will I leave you, 
never will I forsake you. The fact of the matter is this, no one has everything. Even these big billionaires, even the people who win the uh, Powerball, they don't have everything. And a lot of times you learn you don't have everything when you win the lottery. I've heard of stories about that a lot of times. But the blessing of God is when you can say, I have enough. I have enough. I have everything I need because God is so good to me. That's contentment. And that's what comes to Christians that I think non-Christians rarely ever have. One more uh, blessing that God gives us. I really want to talk about this. This is one of my favorites. It's on the screen. The fruit of the Spirit is a gift from God. They're found in Galatians 5. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Anytime you need any of those nine things, they're always available, just for the picking. I don't know if any of you have fruit trees in your yard, maybe an apple tree, or when the apples are out there and they're ripe and you feel like an apple, all you have to do is go out and pick it, don't you? And you can eat an apple. Well, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is like an apple tree in your front yard, and the fruit is always ripe and ready for the picking. Anytime you need any of those fruits, you can just go out and pick it. You, uh, how do you pick it? You ask the Holy Spirit, because they're fruit of the Spirit. And that's when you just pray to the Spirit and say, Spirit, today I'm really feeling a lack of goodness. I need to be filled with goodness. Can you fill me with that? And guess what the Holy Spirit does? It blesses you. In fact, I always uh, tell people that one of the things you want to do is memorize these fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And put that into your prayer life. Because when my life is going badly, and it does that every now and then, because I, I lose my focus on the blessings. When, I, when I, my life is going badly, what I have to do is I have to stop and go down those fruit of the Spirit. And I say, okay, Spirit, talk to me. Which fruit am I missing today? I say, is it love, joy, peace? Maybe it's patience. And so I need to pray for patience. And all of a sudden, guess what? I get blessed. I get blessed with patience. So memorize those fruit of the Spirit. That's your homework for this week. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, when I look back at my life then, I've had a long life, which is a blessing from God as well. And when I look back on how blessed I've been and how much my cup overflows, again, all I can do is exclaim, what blessings? What blessings? And sometimes I wonder, how do people survive in life without the blessings of God? And I guess they do. You know, at least they survive physically. But oftentimes, they survive poorly. And many times when I talk to people, they say, what blessings? Not with exclamation marks, but with question marks. They say, what blessings? I don't see any blessings. Why? Because they put up roadblocks like the disciples did to prevent those blessings from coming through. That's what we're going to talk about next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about what blessings? And the roadblocks people often put up that prevent the blessings of God from showering down upon them. Now, here's what I want you to do this week. Okay? I'm betting just about all of you know someone who just doesn't feel very blessed in their lives. Maybe they're struggling with something. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe they're sick. Maybe there's been a death in the family. Maybe they're having uh, problems at work or at school. I don't know. But I bet just about all of you know someone who's struggling in life. And it may very well be that they have put up a roadblock that prevents God's blessing from coming through. Would you invite them to come to church next Sunday? What I'd like to see is the attendance in this service doubled next Sunday. Because everybody brought a friend who needs to hear what I'm going to be saying and what the scriptures are going to be saying next Sunday. So think about that. Pray about that. Who do you know who's thinking, what blessings? I don't see any blessings in my life. And bring them somewhere where they can find something they really need in their lives. Let's bow our heads right now for a time of prayer. Jesus, 
you call us to come to you so you may lay your hand upon our heads and bless us as your children. When you do that, we are blessed so much. Your love overflows and pours down upon us. Your blessings know no bounds. We receive more than we need or want. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your blessings, which more than sustain us through life on earth and which assure us of life eternal with you in heaven. Amen. Certainly we can count on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to take us into the kingdom of heaven, and that's our closing hymn today. Great is thy faithfulness, because the Lord is faithful to you. Let's stand and join in singing this hymn together. May the God who is faithful to us continue to shower down his blessings upon our lives, that as we might go forth into the world to continue to share with others what blessings.
Amen.